Hello and welcome to Center Ice Cardcast, your one-stop podcast shop for all things hockey cards. My name is Eric Andrews, also known in the hobby as Hammerhawks, and I'm joined by my co-host and fellow hobbyist Aaron Goldstein, better known throughout the hobby as Crease Collector. So as the title would kind of indicate, this episode is going to be all about Aaron's experience at the Spring Expo. So with that, I'm going to largely turn the floor over to Aaron for pretty much the rest of the episode. And uh, I'll interject here and there with some thoughts, but, you know, I'll let Aaron take it away and he can tell us all about his time at the expo. Uh, Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, maybe a shorter review than others. I'm sure I didn't attend the entire weekend, although that was the the original plan. But anyway, so I attended a little bit on Friday, uh, headed up there after work. And I actually um, met up with another collector there to kind of, uh, pass along some items. Uh, Some were podcast related, some were uh, card related. Uh, Met with one of our uh, favorite listeners, uh, Joss Packham, you know, a really very kind guy, a super cool dude. It's something that we've had, maybe not on the books officially, but it's something that I was looking forward to and it was cool to finally meet him. That's something that the expo does tend to obviously do, makes people, you know, interact with the collectors that they see online or you know, have been familiar with and to see them in person is obviously that next level. So um, yeah, it was really cool to meet him, met a few other people as well. I don't want to name too many names for forgetting others, but um, met up with Richard, um, Amit, and a few other people as well, just to kind of a little bit of a meet and greet as well. So that was um, a little bit of my expo experience too. Um, And then on the Friday, didn't get that much of a good luck, just kind of getting a little bit of the layout. And I met up with Carlos as well. He was there. Can't forget him. Um, so that was pretty much it on um, day one. Just kind of got the lay of the land. Didn't get any cards or anything like that. Just sort of did a little quick meet and greet with some people. And um, yeah, just sort of got a feel for the, you know, the show. It was in a different hall than before. Uh, I know the layout of, of the one before was kind of a little bit uh, doubtful if that would work again. So getting a, a new view of this layout in hall number two was cool too. And um, yeah, just seeing a bunch of people and um, knew that it was going to be a really good show. So I uh, came back the next day on the Friday and it was very packed. Um, just the dealers were busy, um, tons of people walking around with tons of stuff in their hands that they bought or that they're trying to sell. Um, it was a really, really good crowd. For those who have not been to the expo, it's one of those things where you kind of have to see to really experience. If you interact with other collectors online, or maybe you've been to a local show, uh, the hobby might seem, maybe not in the past two years, but um, the hobby might seem a little bit small. And um, I guess that still is the case even today when it has sort of, you know, ballooned in popularity. But when you go to a show like this, it really is, you know, the next level and you see, you know, just tons of people um, enjoying, you know, the cards and uh, looking around and, you know, they might have a seat or two at one dealer and they're just looking through cards or, you know, they're kind of moving really fast, booth to booth kind of thing, like whatever their style is for cards and, you know, and looking at them there, you know, you see all different types of people and collectors and it's just, it's really great. It's really awesome to see. So seeing something like that in person, it really kind of solidifies how strong this hobby is and i know that's easy to say in the past two years or so but even before the recent boom we've had i would go to the expo and and still see that sort of participation and so it really made me um double down on the statement that the hobby is strong and i think it'll be strong for years to come i think that's um maybe a little bit up in the air especially when it comes to hockey and you know how popular is it compared to other sports and um well it might not be as popular as others you know on the grand scheme of things you know the toronto expo man, it's, it's very strong. And obviously being in Toronto, there's a lot of hockey. And so that is the main focus. So it really is cool to see that in person. Um, I guess I'll jump into some cards. I'm sure that's what what the majority of you guys are here to listen to. So, um, didn't pick up anything super insane. Um, if you're here to, you know, hear about my, you know, McDavid 9.5s or, you know, Crosby rookies, you know, definitely have unfortunately come to the wrong place or you have, um, come across the wrong half of this podcast. You know, Eric sort of deals a little bit more of that sort of thing. So on my end, more nostalgic than anything else. So um, I'll start off with the boring stuff and then I'll uh, move along to the semi-boring, but a little bit more interesting stuff. Uh, So I picked up a couple inserts, very cool, from the Tim Horton set 
got some cool goalies, got Brodeur and Fleury. You know, it's one of the ones where um, I thought to myself, oh, you know, I'll pick up those eventually. And then, you know, seeing them right there, you know, why not? I also picked up a cool gold medallion insert of Brodeur from 2007. You know, I really enjoyed these cards growing up. And uh, although they don't have too much value, you know, compared to the ice medallion counterpart, getting a gold parallel of anything is really cool. And um, yeah, I definitely didn't have that one. Speaking of cool parallels, um, I picked up a 2000 and 2001 Chrome variant, Tops Chrome of Roberto Luongo. I always been a sucker for uh, goalies in blank, like white masks, you know, if they just move teams or whatever, and they have that blank mask. And so um, I have a couple cards with goalies with white masks. I just thought that was kind of funny. And so I saw this card. I think I got it for free, actually. I think it was thrown in with the Brodeur there. And I'm just like, yeah, why not? You know, I think this is really cool. Um, I know our friend Chris, who listens, uh, will be a fan of that, of Roberto Luongo, in case I didn't mention. So super cool card right there. Now it gets into the, I guess, a little bit more interesting stuff. I got a Upper Deck Heroes from, what year is this one? 2001. It's the Game Use Twig cards of uh, Curtis Joseph. Uh, he was at the show. I, I didn't see him there, but a really cool card there. Um, yeah, just this set is something I've seen kicking around for a couple of years. I know people have attempted the set. I believe there are autograph versions as well. Uh, so I just decided to get this. It was, it was really cheap. And, um, you know, those old, you know, early 2000 sets, you know, you can't really get enough of them. They're, uh, they're really cool back when memorabilia was, uh, you know, was rare and interesting. So yeah, another early 2000 set here. This one a little bit more cooler. Again, another Leafs card, kind of a theme we're seeing here. Uh, this is from, uh, Eric will like this, 0304 Parkers. Uh, set is called Before the Mask. And it's a really cool memorabilia set. Uh, this card is of uh, Johnny Bauer, very awesome. So of course, uh, Before the Mask, being goalies who uh, you know were brave enough to stop a puck without a mask and so you see of course johnny bauer there no mask cool jersey piece there it's kind of like a white swatch of the time which is kind of like a cream ish which is always really cool i i always like seeing you know old swatches like that moving on here um one for the nmoth pc obviously um i didn't pick this up at the show i mean i did pick it up at the show but it was uh, agreed upon quite a little while ago i just sort of picked it up Steven LaRoche, we've had him on the podcast before, um, former in the game employee, brand manager, product development, all that good stuff. He wrote the card backs, he selected photography, things like that. And uh, I got him to sign a 2010-11 Between the Pipes Mass Men card uh, for my uh, builder's collection autograph project. So the autograph is hard to see there on the card. He signed in the top portion, but uh, I thank them already, but thanks Stephen again for, uh, for signing that cool card. And uh, it's a really cool uh, tip of the hat to the people who really deserve it, creating these cards that we, uh, that we enjoy. So that's a, a really neat card right there. And probably as far as the cards go and things like that, the, the rundown I just did, probably my favorite. It's uh, again, another early 2000s card of a couple goalies that I enjoy seeing. Uh, it's from 0203 Upper Deck Mass Collection. And the goalie cards from this collection were amazing. Specifically, the nation's best triple memorabilia card right there. So uh, it's a set that I have seen kicking around for many years. I've always wanted to add a card from this set, uh, but just never pulled the trigger on one for, for one reason or another. But uh, just saw one sitting there for a really good price. It's arguably the best uh, combo in the set. That having Brodeur and Patrick Wall on it. It also has Felix Potvin, which of course, you know, maybe not a legend like these guys, but at the time, just coming from the Leafs, was uh, quite the goaltender back then, for sure. Uh, he's pictured on the LA Kings. And so, yeah, great little combo there. Uh, this set, obviously, Nation's Best, just kind of celebrates uh, some cool goalie combos, uh, depending on where they are from. I believe they just focused on Canada and the US, but they might have done another combo. But uh, this one, of course, is Canadian and the cool little die cut Canada windows there. Really cool. I believe the American versions have a star, super nice cards. And so, yeah, just uh, really, really nice. The swatches on the wall is uh, 
kind of burgundy red, Brodeur has the white, and Potvin has a purple swatch. And so in this case, I really like how the maple leaf it kind of stands out in the middle from the, you know, the white Brodeur swatch. So in this case, I don't, I don't mind a white swatch, and I never really have. And so in this case, it, it makes it kind of pop a little bit. So I really enjoy that. Uh, so that kind of does it for my, uh, my pickups there. Uh, super enjoyable time at the expo. I was planning on making it the next day, but unfortunately, you know, plans got a little changed and I figured, you know what, instead of getting sucked into uh, a bunch of, uh, you know, cards that um, I didn't really need, I figured just to kind of call it quits with this, uh, a really cool expo pickup right there with the triple memorabilia and just kind of call it a show after that cool find. So it would have been nice to walk around, but uh, that's all right. I mean, I'm sure the fall expo will come soon and um, yeah, I'll be sure to report on that when it's uh, when it happens. We've talked about this privately, but I, I really like how the majority of your pickups from the show would be what I consider to be, you know, show pickup type of cards. You know, they're cards that, like you said, you know, maybe you've thought about, you know, oh, I might want to get one of those at some point, or oh, I like this player, but like I don't super collect them, you know, whatever it might be, but. You see the card at, at a show, the price is right, and you grab it. You know, to me, that's what going to a show is kind of all about, you know, is picking up those fun cards that, you know, you would not go out of your way on a daily basis to acquire. But because you're there, because you see it, because you think the price is right, you just say, you know what, that's a cool card. I want it in my collection. I'm going to grab it. You know, specifically, I mean, the quote unquote, kind of the big three actual pickups, you know, knowing that you already used to own the Enroth card that you got signed by Steven, you know, but the, the triple Jersey, the Bauer and the, and the Cujo, you know, those are all cards that, you know, like I said, you wouldn't just go on eBay and, you know, say, Oh, I got to have that Cujo card. I got to have that Johnny Bauer card. You know, it's just, you saw them, you liked them. They, you know, they stuck out to you and, and you grabbed them, you know? So when you told me about those, I was, I was really excited about those three in particular, just because they, they really fit that, you know, show pickup mold, so to speak. So yeah, you know, those three in particular are great cards. You know, I think everyone that's been in the hobby for a while has kind of a, a little, a little soft spot in their heart for those early 2000s memorabilia cards, even if they are basic memorabilia pieces, uh, you know, the, the theme of the cards or the design of the cards, or, you know, the combination of players, whatever it might be, you know, I feel like there was more attention to that kind of back in that era not that there isn't today, but you know, that's kind of what made cards interesting back then as opposed to seeing, you know, wild patches and, you know, stuff that's super scarce and all that, you know, none of those three cards are wildly rare. You know, they're not one of ones, they're not numbered out of five or 10 and, you know, whatever it might be, but you know, they're just really, really, uh, you know, reminiscent of that time period and kind of in their own unique ways. You know, I know around the the early 2000s stick cards were kind of just starting to be a thing. And, you know, that, that specific game used twig set, certainly one of the more notable ones from back then it had, you know, all kinds of legends of the game, as well as, you know, the, the modern day superstars from the time and the Parkhurst rookie before the mask insert set, you know, like you said, a very cool set, you know, just honoring those, uh, you know, legendary old time goalies, you know, that, like you said, were brave enough to play the position without much protection just cool to kind of have them honored in that way with a set, you know, uh, making note of that, you know, like you said, you know, just having a, a wool Jersey swatch, like that's just so cool. Like, you know, it's cool having any Jersey card, you know, whatever, but there's something that just kind of hits different about those vintage Jersey pieces. And even if it's just a very basic, small white piece, it's still really interesting. So I'm always a fan of those. And, uh, you know, yeah, like you said, the the nation's best triple jersey card, really cool set. You know, I know still to this day, people are saying, oh man, I wish mass collection was still a thing. You know, like we talked about on the last episode with Dr. Price coming out with a goalie themed product coming up here at some point, you know, there's always that demand for, you know, goalie cards and, and goalie driven products and things like that. So mass collection was, was a really, really awesome product back in the day. Um, Hard to believe it's been almost 20 years since that was a thing that makes us feel really old in a hurry. But um, yeah, just a really cool card. And I'm glad that you're able to finally get one of those for your collection. I do know that that was, you know, one that you had been wanting for a while. 
um, even if it wasn't, you know, necessarily a must have card or that specific combination of players or whatever it might be. But again, you know, you saw the card, good price, you liked it, you grabbed it kind of fits in that category. So just to make note of those three. And then I really like the Luongo card too. You know, it's just like, it's a very cheap, basic card. There's nothing overly amazing about it, but it's just a cool card. You know, the, you know those um, late 90s, early 2000s tops Chrome cards were just so cool. You know, even just a base card, they were just really cool. You know, and then you factor in that it's one of the all-time great goalies, you know, in the history of the game from the beginning of his career, uh, you know, wearing one of those, you know, bright, bold, red Florida Panthers jerseys from back in the day. And, and then like you pointed out the white mask, it's just kind of interesting. You know, you don't see that super often and seeing, you know, a guy that would go on to be an all-time legend wearing just a blank white mask is, uh, you don't see that very often, you know, you don't, you don't really see, you know, Wa and bro doer and those guys, you know, with just blank masks. So I guess Wa did at the beginning of his career, right? He had a white one when he was a rookie, but yeah, he did. Um, I think Marty might have rocked one too for two seconds, but I'm not really quite sure. But yeah, yeah, it's it's always cool to see like the humble beginnings, maybe even just you know from a gear perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So cool pickup for sure, and you know I think you said he got it for free, so even better. Yeah, and then you know of course like you were talking about with the with the signed card from Steven. Just, you know, that's kind of like, to me, the unique pickup, uh, you know, for, for your experience there, even though you knew that was going to happen. But, you know, just just seeing that come to fruition and, you know, being able to have that in your collection and share that story is, is really cool. So I'm glad that you were able to meet up with Steven and get that done for your collection. And uh, obviously, it, it's a really sweet card in its own right, you know, signed or not, it's just a beautiful card. So, um, you know, the fact that you have it now signed by, uh, you know, a guy that played an instrumental role in making that card a reality is really cool. So yeah, definitely, definitely fun hearing about those cards. Were there any cards that, you know, you were, you saw that you were thinking about getting and then, you know, kind of hummed and hawed and then ended up passing on? Yes, actually. Um, when I looked at the Bauer card, um, you know, the, the one reason I, you know, I wanted to get it is because, you know, it's one of the legends of the game. Um, as far as, you know, uh, us Leaf fans are concerned. And I never had a, a memorabilia card of him yet. So I just figured, you know what, like, like in the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, like I should probably should get one. Um, I was eyeing an autograph card of his as well. Um, I didn't end up getting that. But another one I, I really wanted was also um, a Trechiak jersey card. You know, it's one that I don't have an autograph as well. So he was another goalie that I really tried to pin down. And if I really wanted to, you know, I could have but just the prices were, were too high. And, um, you know, I just, I just couldn't justify it really. Um, it's one of those things where, you know, I would love to add, you know, a Trechiak card to my collection. Obviously for those who don't know, probably the best goalie to never play in the NHL. I mean, just, just his era of not only goaltending, but just hockey was just, was just so special. And so to get a card of his would be really cool, you know, for my general goalie collection I have. And so I guess that'll have to wait, whether it be, you know, an autograph card or Jersey card or, or both. And so I guess the hunt will uh, begin another day, but um, one or two Trechiak cards that I definitely passed on that maybe happen another day. So we'll see, but yeah, a couple cards. I mean, there's so many cards there, you know, you see everything. You could really buy something at any table if you really wanted to, you know, there's just so much good stuff especially right now, you know, uh, the hobby is obviously quite popular. And that was another thing that I really wanted to see um, in comparison to the last expo. Not that it was bad. It was, it was great. And, and it was full, but just the, um, the amount of dealers who were kind of um, back to their normal form, because I assume that some of them might've not gone before because of COVID and they might've been a little bit worried. And so seeing that we're sort of, you know, on our way kind of out of this thing, seeing the dealer turnout. And, and, you know, that was really interesting to me to see. And it definitely was a little bit more active um, in terms of the last expo that it went to, you know, the fall version. And so, um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing, you know, to go on, but up from here, it was a great show and um, yeah, it's cool to see the great turnout. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's cool to hear that analysis there on, you know, kind of how the show has progressed since the last time, you know, you talked about earlier, you know, there being some, some really nice cards and big cards. What were some of the, the more notable cards that, 
that you remember seeing? Um, uh, the Players Choice booth had uh, the Gretzky Shield that was that was pulled recently. Um, um, I believe it was from I forget what product it was, but the the game used autograph Gretzky Shield. I believe it was it, it was on LA, and so they had a had that displayed, which was really cool to see. I mean, you don't see too much new ish Gretzky shields, right? So to see that card was, 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 was really something, uh, you know, the typical stuff, you know, the McDavid's Crosby's, I mean, yeah, it's probably in every booth, but I really don't get too tired of seeing that, you know, you'll see rookie cards and, or cool memorabilia cards, just really just a lot of everything. And, uh, it was really, really nice. Some booths were the same. Some were um, pretty diverse with the cards they showed, but um, it, it was really great. You know, there truly is something for everybody. Uh, there's junk piles, like I'm, like they're not junk, but you know, this one table, the full table was just stacks of cards. Like that was it, just stacks of cards, all top loaded. Just the whole table was just stacks of cards, and 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 you would just people would sit there and just pick up a stack and just. And, and sift through and put up another stack, you know, and, and varying years, it, it's, it's just crazy, right? So memorabilia cards, the whole bit, just autograph, like you name it, it's there. There is some gems in there that you could really find. It's, uh, it's something you could spend all day on. You know, it almost makes you mad because, you know, you're sitting there like, man, I really want to go all the, way, all the way through that. But if I do, I won't have enough time to for anyone else. So you kind of got to, you know, pick up a stack, flick through it, walk around a bit more, come back, pick up a stack. And then that's kind of, and just kind of rotate you into like doing that because that's the only way you can get anywhere really. Uh, so some booths are like that, which is really cool. There's so much other non-sport there. There's memorabilia. There's just everything. It's, it's really cool. You know, the, uh, the dealers really do a good job with that. Uh, there's a lot of good companies there too that uh, put on a good show. There's free giveaways. There's everything, right? It just really is, you know, for, for I think just for cards in general, it, it really is such a cool thing to see. But of course, for hockey cards and having that big stage, it's something. Yeah, for sure. When you look back on your experience at the show, what would you say is like the one lasting memory that, that you'll remember from the show? Um. I would say it's the pickups that I haven't told you about that. Did you want to see them? Of course. Okay, cool. So you're going to laugh at this, but I'm actually kind of excited. Um, I picked up two things. Um, what was that? You want to hear something? I got two storage boxes, Ooh. which is wild considering I'm a binder guy. So I kind of knew uh, that you'd like that one there. So what are your thoughts on my two massive additions at the Expo? That is Two storage boxes that blows away the cards, right? You, you now have a proper home to put the cards in. Well, I haven't decided if I'm going to put them in yet. They're, they're, they're there and ready to go if and when that even happens. So it's still to be decided. Well, at least you have that as an option now. So that's, that's definitely very exciting. Um, of course. So yeah, that, that's awesome. One thing I, I meant to ask you about earlier too, if you remember, if you want to share um, what some of the the prices were that you paid for those cards you got? Um, I always I like remember. I always like hearing that stuff. Let's see here. I know you said I mean, the for... inserts. Uh, I think the the Luongo I got for free. The Brodeur was like a dollar. The Team Canada cards they were like less than a dollar each. The Joseph. Let's see here. I got, I got them from the same booth here, so I think the Joseph and Bauer. I think that was about $30 for a pair here. I picked them up like literally like my first couple booths. I just saw them and I was like, okay, I'm not even going to walk around. Like those cards are so cool. And they were just kind of right beside each other, like two leaf cards right there. And I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, when in the Toronto Expo, you might as well pick up some leaf things, right? So I picked those two up there. Yeah, this one was really cool. This one was, I think you said that the triple was 40 I remember 40 yeah so it was like probably an overpayment but also like they do sell higher than than that so um i mean it's pretty borderline as far as the price goes but at that point it doesn't matter if it's inflated uh because of the expo you know it's just one of those cards where hey you know what i always wanted a card from that set you know it's just kind of been on the back of my mind every time i see one so why not you know it's a good buy and uh i'm happy with it so that's not bad at all i mean obviously Two of the best goalies to ever play the game. You know, they're kind of rare, I guess you could say. I mean, this product, there was not much made. And so it's pretty rare in, in that regard. 
Um, and obviously early 2000s memorabilia, not bad. You can't go wrong. Yeah, for sure. I, w- I was kind of surprised, you know, when you first told me about the card, I was kind of surprised how well those cards sold. You know, right, I, I, feel exactly. like, I feel like That's a lot I haven't of- got one yet because they sell for way too much. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, I mean, you, you would be surprised. You know, a lot of that stuff from that time period doesn't have a ton of value for, you know, kind of more basic memorabilia cards, but those insert sets that were, you know, more scarce and harder to find and, you know, had some bigger names on it, you know, could definitely get up there in a hurry. So I was initially surprised hearing what you paid and I was like, whoa, but then, you know, we started talking about it more and I started looking up some of the cards online and I forget who the uh, the pairing was. I want to say it was like Cujo, Sean Burke, and somebody else. But that card went for like thirty five. So it's like okay, if that trio went for thirty five, forty for a card that has Wa and Brodeur on it, that seems to be a pretty good deal in comparison, in my opinion. For sure, for sure. There's also an other thing that I picked up. I'm going to send you a quick text message. Not sure if you're ready for it go for it. I'm excited to be learning about all of these additional things that you didn't tell me about originally. So that's cool. Let's see what we've got here. Oh my, do tell. Yeah. So what you're looking at, not one, but two Enroth jerseys game worn from the Toronto Maple Leafs. That was kind of like my big one. And that's another reason why I'm like, okay, I, I picked up enough. I'm, I'm good. Thanks. So, um, yeah, I mean, this time with Toronto was very short, but um, it did produce these two jerseys. And so I was able to pick it up from the uh, Real Sports Apparel booth. Uh, I believe they're owned by the MLSE. Of course, you know, the Toronto Maple Leafs fall under that. And so they get um, all their game-worn stuff and uh, they distribute that through their store. And so um, I had seen some... 2016-17 2016-17 stuff on their site before but never saw the Enroth I, I assumed it had sold but then uh, a little bit before the show I inquired to see if they had it couldn't get a clear answer and that was kind of it I stopped by their booth and uh, had asked if they had anything from that season uh, they, they pointed me in the direction of you know a rack with a bunch of jerseys on there was so much jerseys it was unbelievable and there was equipment there and all that stuff but more so jerseys and then so um, I went over there and then I asked, you know, I'm looking for, you know, the Enroth jerseys, if, if anything. And then the guy said, um, you know, sorry about that. Uh, like they're long gone. You know, they were reserved. And and so, you know, you're kind of out of luck, you know, uh, like they're gone. Aaron picked them up and I looked at him. And I was like, I'm Aaron. Yeah, no, that was me who asked about them. And he's like, oh, and I'm like, yeah, like I'm here early um, because I told them originally, you know, I'd be attending on the weekend, but I was able to swing by on the Friday night. And so, yeah, he, he said that he'd put them aside for me, which was really surprising. And then he goes to the corner of the booth and goes underneath the table and into a bag. And he'd put aside those jerseys for me unknowingly. I had no idea that he would have done that. Obviously, they're getting ready for a show and the stuff they're going to sell in their inventory. You know, they don't have really time to personally handle a request, especially since you know, if they put it on hold for someone, it could cost them a sale at the show. Uh, you know, for dealers, it's best that they go in and first come first serve. So the fact that they held it for me was was really uh, impressive. The guy who I was talking to, I forget his name. I want to say Jerry, but um, yeah, he, he told me that these would have been long gone, like for real, uh, o- over the course of the weekend, if they were made public, um, you know, goalie jerseys, they go fast. It doesn't matter who they are. They're very, very popular stuff of especially, you know, any uh, Leaf schoolie for sure. So, um, yeah, I was just super glad to to pick those up. Again, they weren't used too much, but there is uh, quite a bit of wear on both of them. And uh, for, you know, for those wondering, uh, the white jersey is actually, uh, you know, it's kind of bittersweet, but it was, you know, the last game that Enron ever played in the NHL, uh, November 30th, 2016. It was a loss to the Calgary Flames. They lost, but I think he played really good. Like, it should be a public holiday. You know, I, re- I really do think so, you know, November 30th. But anyway, uh, so just a really cool piece, you know, for the collection. Bumps up the game more in Jersey count for sure. And it, of course, you know, puts the nail in the coffin of uh, landing at least one jersey for every team he actually played for. 
So that's really, really cool. So uh, the jerseys are awesome. I mean, the Leafs jerseys, I'm super biased, but they're one of the best jerseys in the NHL, like just the blue, they're classic. And this was the first year that they went back to that kind of old school looking logo as their main chess logo. So, I mean, just especially during that year, those jerseys were awesome, very simple, but awesome. And to get the, uh, the home NOA set is uh, super cool. And I was able to photo match it quite well and uh, really, really nice. So awesome. So what do you think of those cool pickups? Uh, it makes your show way more interesting. Right. Thank you. And uh, I, I'm, I'm shocked that you were able to keep that a surprise. That you're taking a taking a page out of my playbook on. I was those. very surprised. I was very surprised. I told a few people, but I told them, you know, not to tell you, uh, just in case. So just wanted to leave it a nice little surprise to you for for yourself and and some viewers. That is awesome, especially since on the last episode we said that you needed to get a Toronto jersey for your collection. And I know, well, like when you said that, I was like, I had to contain myself because uh, <laughs> I had them waiting there. So great That's timing. Awesome. That's awesome. Oh, well, love that. I know um, I, I had seen, you know, you interacting with, uh, with a member of the, of that company on Facebook, you know, saying, Oh, you know, do you have any? And I think they said like, Oh, like, yeah, we might like come to the show and like, we might and, and figure it out. And, and I was so much in debt, de- in doubt. I was like, they probably don't have it. I've seen some stuff from that year on their site. So I just assumed, you know, that's the only stock they have left. But the guy was saying, like, the Leafs will hold back purposely jerseys from them just so they don't get overwhelmed by giving them, like, 1,500 jerseys. They'll kind of piecemeal it. And so they said that they just received jerseys from 2016-17 in their inventory. And so that that was the first time they had offered them up for sale was at the expo. And so, um, yeah, just great timing. And he said, you know, it's glad that you reached out when you did because they'd be long gone. So just timing worked out yeah just really really cool that's absolutely amazing i love that right and also kind of an interesting tie to those jerseys is that would have been uh, austin matthews and mitch marner's rookie season too so that's kind of cool as well yeah cool cool part of leaf history for sure you know during their centennial season Mm -hmm. uh just just really really cool so yeah uh, a really awesome addition to the collection and uh yeah it's one as a leaf fan it's just it's really cool you know, although on a hockey side, it didn't really, uh, didn't really go in Roth's way. Um, he said, when I met him, you know, although from a hockey perspective, it didn't really go that well for him. He really did enjoy his time in Toronto. So it, uh, you know, again, as a Leaf fan, it's, uh, it's really cool to see that. And as a goalie fan, I mean, what more could you want, you know, a game used jersey from, uh, you know, one of your favorite players on your favorite team. So really, really nice. Yeah, and the the final year of Reebok jerseys as well. The right. year after they switched to right. Adidas, but long live Reebok. True. Yeah, so they they had some great jerseys over the years for sure. But man, I mean, I feel like at least in terms of like memorabilia, that's probably like the holy grail for your collection is is getting his game worn Leafs jerseys. I mean, I mean, maybe not in the eyes of other game worn collectors, but just on a personal level. I mean, seeing Toronto Maple Leaf game use jerseys, I mean, that's just awesome, let alone the player on the back. Just super awesome to see. And uh, just it's just so cool. It's just really, really, really cool. So, um, yeah, just awesome. Well, kudos to you on that. that. That's awesome. I won't ask you what you paid for those because I'm sure it was a pretty penny. But, yeah, that that definitely uh, highlighted the show for sure, I'm, I'm assuming. No, oh, no, it did. I'm, I'm done with my surprises now. So yeah, we can wrap this up. Uh, nothing will top that. It's just, it's impossible. So you're sure you didn't buy like a Crosby cup RPA or anything like that? I wish I, I saw, uh, you know, photocopies of them, you know, cause they didn't want to put them in the display that they had them. So uh, they had them kind of printed off of the ones they had. So that's the closest I'm going to get to owning one of those. And maybe next time we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> You'll have to sell those on Roth jerseys to afford that, though. I can afford 10 RPAs after that, right? <laughs> in, <laughs> oh, in that's dream. awesome. That's awesome. I'm happy for you. That's, uh, those are two huge additions to your collection for sure. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you don't, you don't have too many, too many days like that where you can pick up two just massive items for your collection. So that's, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, definitely explains, you know, kind of the quote unquote lack of card pickups and, you know, 
why I need to go back on Sunday when you got some sweet cards and you got two monster additions for your collection, right? So that that kind of rounds out the the full picture a lot a lot better now for me. <laughs> Definitely, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I was going to go to the Sunday, you know, I truly was um, even with those pickups, but um, you know, I, I, I got kind of sidetracked and I said, you know what, I, I, I think I'm going to put a pin in this one. You know, I think I'm okay. Uh, considering I didn't have much time left if I were to run down there. So I figured, you know what, I'll save that one last look around and, uh, and I'll just get geared up for the fall expo. Yeah. No, I think you did you certainly did well enough on a day and a little bit for sure. No doubt there. So that's awesome. Um, you know, and if you guys missed the last episode, uh, that makes three Enroth game worn jerseys that Aaron has picked up recently. So you are on quite a hot streak of, of big time PC pickups. So that is, that's awesome. I'm surprised that you got both, you know, I figured if they had one, you know, it would, it would just be one. So that's, that's awesome. Would you say it might be hard to pick a favorite? I mean, I know you said there, there's the last game significance of the one, but just looking at, you know, the actual jerseys themselves, do you have a preference between the white or the blue? Oh, man. I mean, like I would say the blue because, you know, the big, you know, royal blue everywhere. It just, it just looks so cool. But then again, on the white ones, you could see the wear so well. There's a lot of puck marks and things like that. So, I mean, there's like – Normally, like, like I would say the blue hands down, but because, you know, the white is, you know, the last game played in his career, you know, I think overall, I think it was really successful career. And, uh, you know, so that kind of splits it down the middle for me. So I think it's even 50, 50. I can't really choose, you know, you know, there's, there's the, which Jersey looks better versus, you know, significance and all that stuff. So it's, it's a 50, 50. Yeah. I totally get you there. I remember back and I guess it would have been like summer of 2016 after Ryan Dezingle's first NHL season, the Senators have a game-worn jersey program where they sell the jerseys online through their shop. And uh, they pretty much just list everything that they have. And, uh, you know, I remember kind of having that debate myself of, okay, his white jersey was the jersey he wore in his NHL debut. The red jersey was the one he wore for his first NHL goal. And then you have the black throwback jersey, which just looked way better than the home and away. So, you know, to me leading up to that, I was like, oh man, like, I don't know which one I would want to get. And uh, that's a tough decision. It was like that. That's a tough decision. It was because they each had their pros and not that they had cons necessarily, but I mean, generally speaking, a white jersey isn't as interesting as a color jersey. And then, you know, the, the white and red both had significance to them as far as what he accomplished in them, whereas the black one just looked really cool. So, you know, I, it was a hard decision. So I thought, and then when I went to go, I think they had set like a day and a time where they would launch the jerseys. And I want to say that it was only the red and maybe the black one that they had. I think Ryan kept his white one from his NHL debut. So that was automatically you know, boom, don't even have to consider that anymore because it's not an option. So I think the black was possible. I think it was there. But, you know, to me, it was like, okay, first goal versus just a random jersey, like got to go for the first goal. So I went with the first goal, have that um, in my collection and definitely happy with that choice. But yeah, I mean, the fact that you were able to not have to make that choice and you were able to get both of them, I mean, problem solved, right? Oh, for sure. You know, I was kind of debating in my mind, you know, when he he pulled out uh, the little bag there that he had, I was like, okay, is it going to be both? We'll we'll see. Like, which one do I choose in the moment? Because the other one's getting sold. But, uh, you know, I just decided, you know, both was the way to go here. So, uh, yeah, I think it was a good move. Yeah. Once in a lifetime opportunity. I mean, exactly. Like you said, I think you knew in that moment that if you didn't grab them, both you would and you only got one you'd probably never see the other one ever again so probably not probably not I mean and plus like it'd be one thing if and this was another factor he had played the whole season or you know if you're looking at your own collection they'll have many sets right and so if you don't get one now you'll probably get one later Mm -hmm. but you know in this case it was these were it like these were the only two like that's it so it's like it's almost like a one of one right If, if you don't get you know the other one well, that's it. There's no set two or set three or a playoff set or something like that that you can try and snag. Nope. There's, 
that's it. It's just these two. So that made it harder. But at the end of the day, I, I think a better decision considering I, I got both, which was lucky. And I can't really tell if this is a hockey card podcast anymore <laughs> or a game or Jersey. I, I really can't tell at this point. So I think uh, either we're speaking to the listeners like right up their alley or we're just boring them to tears. So uh, <laughs> I can't tell at this point. Yeah. Who knows? It, it is kind of interesting too. It kind of ties into my recent mail day of the two Derek Whitmore jerseys, you know, kind of like exactly. The, and I, and I thought of that too, when I picked them up, I thought the timing of all this is, is unreal. And that's why I sent you the pictures over text just now because you do the same. So I'm like, I got to follow that sort of <laughs> reveal formula and, and, you know, and because you just did it there. So yeah, just another thing that just came on really fast. And uh, yeah, I think overall, like I said, I think it was a really good expo experience. I would say so. I would say so. It seems like that was an extremely successful trip without a doubt. So yeah, again, kudos to you on those pickups. Um, you know, the cards speak for themselves. They're, they're great cards and have good stories with them. But, you know, then adding those two jerseys is, is just amazing. So that's awesome to hear. And, and like I said, kudos to you for keeping the surprise because that's typically not something you do. So love hearing that. Is there anything else that you, you would want to share about your pickups or the experience at the expo? Uh, nope. I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. It was just all around a, a really good experience and uh, I'm glad I can share it with everyone. Awesome. Cool. We'll shift gears here and preview an upcoming episode. For those who have not heard, Upper Deck Series 2 uh, was just announced as being released on June 15th. And I'm not sure when this episode is probably coming out. It's probably coming out after Series 2 has already come out. So, you know, just to put a disclaimer, we are recording this a little bit in advance just because we've kind of gotten backlogged on, on recording and just, uh, you know, other commitments with work and, and stuff like that, kind of preventing us from recording as frequently as we'd like. So we are recording this a little bit ahead of time. So, you know, like I said, series two has probably already come out by the time you're listening to this um, on June 15th. But just to give a little bit of a sneak preview for the episode, uh, we are anticipating receiving a box of series two from Upper Deck. So once that arrives, we will have an episode breaking down the product with the one and only Billy Celio, Upper Deck product manager, who is responsible for Upper Deck series two each year. And uh, then, of course, after we break it down, we will open up that box. So definitely stay tuned for that. It's exciting. You know, like I said, we're recording this in advance. The checklist was actually just released earlier today you know, as of when we're recording this. So that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of, of when we're talking right now. But there are some big names on that checklist for sure. I mean, you know, with the Young Guns, you've got Lucas Raymond and Moritz Sider probably being the two big ones. You've got Quentin Byfield in there as well. There are certainly quite a few pretty notable names on that Young Gun checklist. And then, of course, you've got, you know, the Young Gun canvas for Cole Caulfield, Spencer Knight as well in there. So, I mean, there's some there's some big cards to chase after for sure. So it's going to be really fun talking about that product with Billy. And uh, hopefully we get lucky and hit one of those big cards. That would be awesome. But just wanted to throw that out there for you guys to be looking forward to. So definitely stay tuned for that. We're excited. It's always fun talking with Billy and, and talking about the flagship products when they come out and, uh, you know, being able to bust a box obviously is going to be very fun as well. So stay tuned for that and uh, we'll keep you posted on uh, when that's going to be, but I think that'll pretty much wrap it up for this episode. Not going to lie. It ended up being a lot more exciting and interesting than I thought it was going to be. You know, I, I thought it was just capping out at those cards. And then I was amazed by the, the white cardboard boxes and then you completely blew all that out of the water and made all that stuff look irrelevant in comparison. So loved that. Again, great job on, on building up to that. Definitely made it pretty fun hearing about that. And uh, yeah, definitely, definitely excited for you that you got those and uh, had a great time with the expo. One of these years, I will make it up there. I promise I would love to go and just see all that the expo is and take it in and be surrounded by hockey cards. So one of these years I will get there, I promise. But in the meantime, you'll have to you'll have to enjoy it for me. So yeah, I think that'll that'll wrap it up for this episode. But uh, you know, we we appreciate you guys listening and hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing Aaron's experience and hearing about all the, the sweet stuff that he ended up picking up at the show. And uh yeah, we're uh we're looking forward to uh series two episode and then um at some point in the near future, throw out an, another little preview here. 
I will be showing off my, my big grandiose mail day at some point in the near future once we kind of get caught up on, on this stuff that's a little bit more timely. So also stay tuned for that. We're planning on having that be the episode right after this one, but with Series 2 coming out, we're probably going to push that one back after Series 2. And I know um, SP Authentic is coming out as well at some point. So we'll just see how how things kind of piece together time-wise. But um, yeah, definitely stay tuned for that because I know you guys will not want to miss that one either, uh, whenever that might be. So like I said, that'll wrap it up for Episode 61. Please be sure to follow us on social media. We can be found on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Centerize Cardcast and on Twitter at Centerize CC. Please also be sure to subscribe to the show on your podcast platform of choice to make sure you never miss a future episode. Until next time on Centerize Cardcast, keep collecting those hockey cards.